next week is Flat Out Friday and we've been invited to do the goofball category. What does that mean? Well, at the end of the event, they allow 10 to 15 riders to hit the track and race pretty much anything they want. So what are we gonna do? Well, we've got something special planned. We've had this tandem bike for a few years now. It does have a 250 watt motor on the front, but that's not gonna be enough. So we have to do something special. I've got a 1,000 watt motor and a 2,000 watt motor. I'm going to push 2,000 in the rear, 1,000 in the front. One thing that we have to keep in mind is pedals are not allowed. So that's going to make this kind of crazy because right now this thing rides on a coaster brake. So to solve that, we're going to take this front fork off, put a new fork on it, probably a triple tree if we have one, but I'm not sure it's going to fit. And then that will allow us to put a disc brake on the front. And then on the rear, there are no brake mounts. So we're just gonna run heavy regen and just hope that that slows us down enough. All right, so to get this going, we're gonna get a couple different tools. I need a chain breaker, a couple different wrenches just to get these parts off. And uh, I'm gonna look for some torque arms. So let's go check it out. As you guys can see, we've been in the process of remodeling this whole place. It's really coming along. I'd say probably another week or two, we'll have the office done. And then a few weeks after that, we'll really start looking in here. I love these test stations. You'll notice this is that front wheel, uh, that 250 watt motor I was telling you about. It's kind of cool. Uh, this is from probably like 2019 or so, but when it came out, it actually had a battery that could be built into it. So you could remove the battery, put it back in, but everything was self-contained inside this wheel so that you didn't have to mount a battery somewhere. It's kind of awesome. Now this rear wheel is the other problem because it runs on a coaster brake. So we're not going to have a break in this back. So I'm hoping to do regen. So we're back to looking at this front fork. Um, as you can tell, this thing is, I don't even know, maybe eighth inch thick, um, aluminum at its thinnest and quarter inch at its thickest. So this is just going to rip out immediately when we put a thousand watts on it. So I have to take this fork off and then we're going to go look into our spare parts area and hopefully I can find something that will uh, fit it and hopefully have a disc brake on it. These old style forks are pretty simple. Um, they just use a single bolt that's on the headset up here. You just loosen that. That will pull the stem out and then there's just one nut that holds this entire assembly on. We loosen that up and we'll all pull out. By the way, if you like these kind of crazy projects, uh, we can start making more videos on them. We do them all the time, actually. If you remember last summer, we did that video for Tim Sway where we converted his like 1960s Vespa. If you haven't seen that one, definitely go to Tim Sway's YouTube channel and check it out. But, you know, we can start documenting some of these things if you guys are interested. By the way, our new facility has been working great. Um, the extra space has been amazing. We have 16 foot ceilings in there now, which allow us to use racks and everything. And it's just like doubled, if not tripled what we can do. All right, yeah, here's our little back of the shop. There's just broken frames and random parts back here that we usually will go out and scrap eventually, but we hold things on just for projects like this. So this is the one I'm looking at. This is from 2018. This is a model we used to do called the Breeze. And I think I'm going to use it because it's the only one with the older style stem, just like that tandem bike. And um, it's got some suspension and it's got some disc brakes. So let's try to use this guy. So we'll do the same process to this one. Hi, bud. Go to your bed. It looks like it's gonna fit perfectly. It might be a little bit longer than it should be, but I don't really care. Nice. Is that okay? That's not going anywhere. So I'm gonna put 180 millimeter on here. That fork, I don't think, would be good for too much more than that. So one thing when you're mounting these disc brakes on these e-bike wheels, they have a spacer in here. And sometimes you use it and sometimes you don't. Um, it's gonna all depend on your fork 
and it's going to depend on the thickness of the disc brake, and it's going to depend on uh, the actual caliper mounts, so many different things. This is actually one of the more frustrating areas about So if you take a look now down here, you can see because there is no spacer, it is rubbing on the caliper. And so because of that, now this problem is becoming even greater. Take two. All right, so since I added that spacer, you can see there's enough space in there and the wheel will roll perfectly fine. All right, so next up is adding a rear motor, which is actually just a front motor. You can see I put on a, a torque arm set just to keep this thing safe. I then went through with that crank arm puller and I, uh, I removed both of these cranks and I'm gonna put foot pegs on here. So now it's in kind of a stable place and uh, we can start to look into how we're gonna mount batteries and the controller. The kits came with two bags. So we can mount the controllers in these. There. That will do. Now we gotta connect our controllers up using these uh, little terminal blocks that they gave us. All right, so we're continuing along. Um, I have both controllers mounted in here now. They're partially wired up. But the next thing I want to do is take a look into battery. These are the brackets that we use for the Bandit. Um, they mount on the top tube. But I have found that they can mount perfectly right here. The battery cable will go through the slot and then we'll feed right to the controllers from there. So I'm actually going to run a battery on each side of it like this. And I think that should work okay. It'll keep it balanced because um, I got to figure out a way to put two of these on here. So this seems to be the best way. So let's give it a shot. I have secured these onto these brackets. And so now I've got these pipe clamps and I'm gonna run it through these two slots and clamp it on. All right, I have it completely set up. You can see I've got the front loader. I got the rear motor, they're all set up and ready to go. Um, now it's just time to take it out on the road and give it a quick test. All right, so I have both motors hooked up. I got the front and rear, they're all set. The front motor is getting a little bit loose, so I'll have to keep on tightening that up. I do want to put a torque arm on the front, but I think for now we're okay. Um, and so now Taryn and I are gonna take it for a ride, but to start, I'll take it by myself. So in case it breaks down, we'll be okay. It's running one brake, which is still pretty sketchy. Ugh. Yeah, holy crap. We got speed. Here we go. Here we go. Oh my God. So it definitely works. Um, the front brake is really bad, <laughs> but we'll see how that goes. I might want to try to figure out something in the rear, to be honest with you, but we'll see. I smell burnt rubber, which is good. Yeah, what do you think? I don't know. Was it going 30, maybe? I mean, you were going like 100. <laughs> yeah. See, it looks so much faster because the bike is longer, I think. Let's go this way. <laughs> so nice. <laughs> All right, turning around. If I do it by myself, this is what I want to see. Oh God.
do it by myself. <laughs> what do you think? I like a banana split like a That was a good reference. Yeah, we'll have to figure it out. It's just going to be one person or two person there.